Today I want to talk about how deer are getting through this harsh winter. If you're like me, you walk around going, what the heck? <clears throat> it's so cold and we're expecting uh, the temperatures to go up tomorrow, rain, and then go back down to single digits. That's just great because there's a good bit of snow out there. It's already crusty. Deer can't paw through it. Now it's going to get a crust of ice on it, making things even worse. So <clears throat> you wonder sometimes how deer can survive and other wildlife. I remember working up in the Adirondacks where you have 30 below zero temps, three feet of snow, and you'd see turkeys in the spring. It's like, how, how did they get through the winter? It's a mystery sometimes. You'd think they'd freeze to death, starve to death, but they have ways of coping that we can't even hardly fathom because we're nice and comfy in our oil heat, even though I hate oil heat, but um, so some of the ways that deer cope with winter is to, number one, conserve energy so that they're not in an energy deficit. They spend about 75% of their time resting in the winter. So even more importantly, though, they rest in areas where they can grab a little thermal energy from the sun. They're, so you're going to find them on the south slopes. They're going to be out of the wind. Uh, more important than sun would be the, the thermal cover of conifers. So we rest in conifer thermal cover. And one of the things that you can do to manip manipulate habitat and make it better for deer is to plant things like spruce, fir, uh, hemlock, things like that, where the, the leaves come all the way down to the ground and stay there. That way you're cutting wind as the wind shears across the landscape, it'll hit a plantation of conifers like that that are low and slow the wind down or deflect it up. So they can lay on the lee side of that and stay warm. And then if, if you had uh, conifers on a south facing slope, even better. Okay, um, a couple other things they do is they, they can use paleo erection, which is a just a fancy term of saying they, they make their hair stand up a little bit. If you ever noticed when you're hunting and you're bundled up and you're sitting in your stand nice and still, you don't really feel cold. And then when you get up and start walking around and moving air through your clothing, you start shivering. That's because you've been trapping air and insulating yourself when you're still. So deer can do that same thing by making their hair stand up and trap more air. And then when uh, they're losing heat like crazy, they can shiver to create heat. But don't forget anything that you do, moving around, shivering, digestion, everything that you do, uh, running from coyotes or whatever, is using energy that you need. And it's very critical for them not to burn all that up in the winter time and freeze to death. And I said before, you know, radiant heat, anytime they can get some sun. Uh, the other thing they do is reduce their metabolic rate so they don't quite need as much to eat. In, a, in times of scarce, scarcity, you find that animals will reduce their metabolic rate. And if you go down to southern Texas or Mexico, you'll find that deer reduce their metabolic rate in the summer when um, food is less palatable. And up here, it's winter time. They don't, they don't have any palatability and they, they, can't, uh, they can't keep up. They, there's an energy deficit the whole time. And that's where the fat storage comes in. And that's where another place we can manipulate the habitat so that deer are good and fat going into winter. So anything you can do food plot wise to pound a lot of fat into those deer. Some of my better properties that I work on that have the population in, in check and plenty of food more than they need. When you kill a deer and you gut it out, you can see mass quantities of yellow fat around their organs, kidney fat, um, intestinal fat, and then they have the obligatory fat, which is fat that they, they will always lay on their back. Everybody that has skinned a deer, you see that layer of fat on the backside. 
the thicker that is, the better. Very dense fat, very useful. Um, I've seen it already where it's an inch and a half thick back there. So that's, that's an indicator of a healthy herd. But the best indicator is that fat that's in around the kidneys. Um, short feeding excursions. This is something that is an interesting thing because you'll often see deer feeding in the afternoon when, when the air is still. It's not a windy day and it's a sunny day. You'll see a lot of deer up feeding because they can soak up some sun, get a few calories, get something in their rumen, and you'll see them in the afternoon feeding. Now this, this is just a rudimentary chart, but it shows that deer have, what I'm trying to illustrate is that the timing of feeding is a very narrow window. So here's your evening feeding, and it's a real skinny spike. So all deer are, eat, are eating right at that sundown point. Then there's a broader increase in the middle of the night when the wind has died down. It's not windy at night. So they feed kind of at a low rate, but a longer period of time, if that makes sense, in the middle of the night. And then there's a small morning feed, okay? So that's how deer cope. I mean, uh, conserving energy, reduce their metabolic rate, lots of rest, and trying to sit in the sun, get out of the wind. So they need a place to do that, and they need a place to forage. If you want to look at the video that I did last week on how to and what to plant for deer browse in the wintertime, uh, I'll put that in a link down in here somewhere. All right, I'll see you on the next video, and stay warm out there.